Putting ideas into action is hard work. Lots of things can go wrong, and you'll probably experience disappointments along the way. However, you know it will all be worthwhile when you've succeeded. So how can you increase your chances of success? Well, in an earlier program, we talked about the importance of having a problem-solving map to guide you through the process. Now, that map was quite high level. It's a bit like having the directions to drive between cities, but no details once you arrive in the general area. In order to make your idea a reality, we now need a much more detailed map, one that shows what turns to take and when to take them. However, unlike the problem-solving map, this one is going to be created entirely by you. Let's get going. Please grab your workbook and turn to the page labelled Planning Your Big Idea. Write your big idea at the top. Make sure you write the full description because this helps in the planning process. We're going to create a list of all the tasks necessary to make your idea come to life. One very simple way to do this is to ask yourself the question, in order to have, in our case, started our rock carrying fitness business, what must I have done? And then to list everything you can think of. If you have a big task, you simply repeat the question and break it down into smaller chunks that you feel are about the right size to work with. As a quick productivity tip, if you have some sticky notes, it's worth writing each task on a separate note. It makes organizing them much easier. Once you've generated your task list, you can switch on convergent thinking and select all of the tasks that you think are essential to reaching your final big idea destination. If you want to create the list now, you might need to pause this program and come back when you're ready. OK, you now have the list of tasks that you have to complete, but they're not necessarily in the right order. So now you have to create your timeline. Let's begin. Flip to the next page labelled Short-Term Tasks. You'll see four columns, Task, Who Will Do It, By When, and Check. Starting with the first column, Tasks, review your list of starred tasks and select those that should be completed within the next two weeks. Individually list each task in the first column. Once you've done that, you can move on to column two, Who Would Do It. Look at each of the tasks and write in who would be responsible for each one. The next step is to look at the third column, by when. What's the cutoff date for when each task should be completed? Try not to be too optimistic about dates. Build in time for delays and reworking things, because life is like that. Add the dates into your timeline before moving on to the final step. Finally, review the fourth column, check. Think of someone who can make sure each task is completed, then write them into the fourth column. This is important to ensure that the plan is kept on target. OK, you now have your list of short-term tasks. It's likely that there's a sequence for the tasks. That's to say, some need to be completed before others. And you can shuffle them around to reflect that if you like. However, don't spend too much time doing this, because plans have a funny habit of changing. Next, flip to the next page in your workbook, the one titled Intermediate Tasks. Now, intermediate tasks are those tasks that would be completed within the next three months. Again, review the four columns, tasks, who'll do it, by when, and check, and go through your tasks and repeat the steps you did for the short-term tasks. You've probably guessed by now that after the intermediate tasks comes long-term tasks, and you'll find these on the next page of your workbook. In our example, long-term tasks are those tasks that should be completed within a year. Again, use the four columns as you did before, review the remaining tasks, if there are any, and place them in the timeline. So, having completed your timeline, can you now see the route to your wonderful destination? And perhaps more importantly, can you see who else might be joining you on the journey? Don't be surprised if you have to revise the timeline, possibly many times. The key point is that you have a map. However, you're not finished yet, because although you have your map, you don't know if there are any traffic jams or shortcuts, and it's well worth thinking about that in advance. So how can you find that information? Well, obviously, by thinking about traffic lights. Imagine that all the people and resources you need are like traffic lights, and that depending upon their colour, they can either help or hinder you. Now, if you're an optimist, you'll probably assume that they will all be green. However, the realist in you might just like to check, and this is one simple way to do that. 
Please open your workbook and turn to the red light, yellow light, green light page. Start with the green column and think about all of the things that will help you get to your big idea the quickest. For example, our big idea is to develop a rock carrying fitness business. Our green light factors include things like we have lots of rocks in our back garden, people in our family love collecting rocks, and Uncle Ernie is a former miner and he will give us financial support. Take a look at your own big idea and consider all the green lights you have. Think about issues of time, resources and people. Try to be as specific as possible. Next, we'll look at the yellow light column. Yellow light items include anything that you're unsure whether or not they would support your idea. For example, you may worry that your neighbours wouldn't appreciate your running the business from your house. However, they may love the idea and want to get involved. Write down all of the uncertainties in the yellow light column. They'll stay here until you've gathered enough information to put them in either the green or the red columns. Finally, move to the red light column. What are all the things that are going to stop you from reaching your destination? Instead of listing them, write them out in the how-to format that we've used in previous programs. For example, instead of writing, we don't have enough money to market our business, we could change it into how to get the money to buy advertising. We already know Uncle Ernie will help, but are there other sources of funding? Write down the other sources of funding, either in the green light, if they certainly will help with the funding, or in the yellow light, if you're unsure. Continue to generate a list of how-tos in the red light column. Remember, if you find sources that help to overcome your red lights, then place them in the appropriate category. The purpose of this traffic light tool is to get an overview of the things that will help or hinder you from reaching your big idea destination. Spending time thinking about these factors can be enormously helpful in avoiding roadblocks and finding shortcuts. For homework, we'd like you to do absolutely nothing. Have the evening off and enjoy yourself. See you in the next program.